Well, version four of the DJF control profile is available now, and you can control up to three sets of six Canon PTZ cameras on a Stream Deck or on an iPad. So this is gonna be any combination of the Canon PTZ CRN 100s, 300s, 500s, or 700s. Let's take a look at how the Canon PTZ profiles work. So from the home page, we're going to select the menu and then there's the PTZ button down here. It says one at the moment, but after I've selected any camera, so three, for example, when I come back, you'll see PTZ three. So this button is always going to jump into the last selected camera, which is great if you're going off and you're switching and then you want to come back to adjust the camera. So we've got six cameras that you can select anyone by just highlighting them. You'll see the tally lights here. So if I was to cut here, you'll see that these have changed. Each of the cameras has three pages. There's the home page for each camera. There's a recall page, which has additional recall buttons. And then an adjust page, which is gonna change your exposure and your shutter speed and your focus and um, some custom traces in there as well, as well as module feedback. And you can turn the cameras on and off. In total, you can input 18 cameras into the system and then you can switch between three different sets of six cameras. By default, the bank change is off, but if I was to long press, then you can turn on the bank button. So now this is active and it's showing that I'm operating cameras one to six. If I was to press this again, you'll see there's a bit of a flash here as it reassigns the IP addresses. And now I'm controlling cameras um, seven to 12 and then I'm now controlling cameras 13 to 18, and last press brings it back to cameras one to six. I normally have this turned off just so I don't bump it, um, but that is there if you do need easy switching and you need to address more than six cameras, or maybe you have different um, locations that you go to, and you wanna be able to switch between different venues. The home page is broken up into a couple of sections. You've got your manual control of the cameras here for going in and out or left and right, up and down like that. You can control the speed of that. So there's three settings, fast, medium, and slow. So if I wanna go fast and I wanna do like quick things where I just really quickly reposition, um, you can do that. Or if you wanna have something that's more slowly moving, um, you can you can do more slower, smoother maneuvers that way. There's eight recall buttons here so that you have handy access to eight of them. And if you need more than that, you can go over to the recall page where you can have up to 36. But coming back here, then we've got the, the drive mode along the top. You can change the, the speed of the drive with three settings, slow, medium, and fast again. So you had that for the manual control, but then for the drive control, you've got slow, medium, and fast. You'll see on the time here, that's gonna to translate to two seconds, 30 seconds, or seven seconds for the slow, fast, and the medium. The time button and the repo are gonna be the different um, time modes. So repo is the normal camera mode where it's going to very quickly change between um, camera positions as fast as it can. So this is more of an off-air maneuver. And then an on-air maneuver would be selecting the drive time and you will notice that it'll go fast, but it's very much the same. It's a, it's a smoother transition, particularly when you got the pan and tilt in it. And then um, if I put it on a medium is good, about seven seconds. Um, that is where I can pull out to something a little bit more subtly. If you don't wanna use the time drive, then you can press time again and it'll switch over to the speed mode here. And again, under um, adjust, this is where you can come in and also select time or speed, and then adjust your the speed that you wanna work at. Then we've got three different modes that I'm gonna go into in a separate video, but quickly, they're turning on an auto loop on or off. Um, you can turn on a gang mode to consolidate all of your settings between cameras as you move between them, on or off. And then you can either have um, preview or program cutting or just turn that off. These are really powerful features and so I'm gonna do a video on that separately because I wanna sort of highlight some of what that can do to sort of speed up your workflow and to help you sort of set up for a shoot and put a lot of things on automation. Over to the adjust menu and you'll see we've got the drive speed and time here, gain shutter iris, white balance, focus, auto or manual selection here, some auto traces that you can build on the back end and then recall them here. And then you can change your focus speed here from slow, medium, or fast. 
you can either turn the module off or turn the module back on, or you can actually turn off the camera, or you can turn the camera back on from standby and you'll see that fade in there. In addition to the PTZ profiles, you can integrate that with an ATEM if you wanna have your cameras and your switching in the one profile so that you can follow tallies and consolidate your switching and your camera control. All right, so that's an overview of how to navigate the new DJF 4.0 profile for Canon PTZ cameras. If you wanna see how to install Companion and get a bit more in depth into the actual networking and the systems part of it, then take a look at this next video. And if you wanna find out more about the Companion profiles available for download, check out daviddoshaford.com companion. See you in the next video, bye.